Good morning. I'm Tom Butcher here at the UN in Vienna at the Zero Project Conference for a fireside chat, sadly, virtually, with the consultant and disability expert and publisher of the excellent newsletter, Disability Debrief, our friend Peter Torres Fremlin. Peter, to start off, and before I settle into a few questions that I want to ask you, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your activities at the moment? Hi, Tom. Really, really great to be here, and I miss, I miss being in Vienna in person. I know it's such a, a great energy um, at this conference. I'm a disabled person. I've been working on disability in, uh, in development and international cooperation for the past 10 years, and I've recently started publishing this news that are disability debrief, which tracks um, international news and views from around the world and tries to sort of understand how disabilities place in a changing world. Great, thank you so much, which of course leads us into the first question is, what do you think that um, good practices in disability both do show us and what should they show us? No, thanks, Tom. It's, it's such an important um, moment we're at, and I think the project, the Zero Project, does so much to capture that that energy, that that innovation, Thank that you. real <laughs> progress. Um, it's always it's always so exciting to see sort of this this movement to remove barriers and the ways that that people are striving to live full lives. I think it's sort of um, when you look at the range of areas of innovation, it's in so of information, it's in libraries, it's in schools, it's in mail services, it's on the radio, it's, um, there's an app to identify, identify currency to provide sign language, right? Like, and it's not just, it's um, not just in sort of very, very sort of um, comfortable situations, it's in, it's in refugee camps in Bangladesh, it's in the pandemic response, it's in, I saw a project in agricultural technology in Cambodia. Um, so it's really reforming so many, so many things at the areas of, of society, right? Like it's education, mm -hmm. health, and employment, public services. I saw sort of like um, accessible parks and playgrounds, um, sanitation, tourism. I saw sort of the pharmaceuticals uh, company as well, disaster shelters. It's such, such a range of innovation and, and new technology. And I think it's really sort of... Um, bursting forward, I guess, um, okay, okay, Caroline Casey put it, put it very well, Tom, she said, I think, maybe on the first day, like, accessibility is the greatest unifier that we have, these practices are, are bringing people, bringing people together and into society. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, and you seem to have um, kind of um, summed up the range of innovative um, practices um, that we've seen, not only, well, quite a few of them this um, year, but just over the last X number of years. Um, wh which brings me on to my next point, um, Peter, which is, you know, we've got so far, we have, needless to say, everybody knows we haven't got far enough yet. But how, how do you think that um, there are practices, there are good practices, there are better practices, there are worse practices. How do good practices as they are now relate to the situation of disabled people? I'd be really interested, especially yeah. with your, um, your, your, your vast e experience um, around the world. So if you, if you could fire away and give us some idea about that, that would be absolutely great. Yeah, now Tom, and this is, this is where it gets more um, difficult, uh, doesn't it? Because innovations are improving lives, but there's still, there's still such a gap, right? That yeah. um, disabled people are more likely to be in poverty. They're less likely to be in school. We're less likely to be in work, right? Like I think we, we, we know that, we've all seen the pandemic effects, we're still living the pandemic effects as, as so many countries go to sort of laissez-faire, let it, let it rip, yeah. uh, live with it approach to the pandemic. We're going to, it's, it's very sort of bitter and sad that lots of us are taking the decision to like self-exclude from 
from certain aspects of social life when we've worked so hard to 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 gain inclusion to them i think that just sort of reflecting reflecting on this i think that there's this um sort of uh disconnect that we're trying to bridge between policy changes and the differences in people's lives i think that we've got a lot more commitments um to work on disability inclusion we've got sort of real real promises for change but a lot of disabled people haven't haven't felt that um there's sort of still a sort of lot of um segregated services or separate solutions or people being left behind and and again the pandemic was sort of um not just sort of something that that compounded our situation and put us at risk but showed how how easily things could be could be lost right so i think this is something um Tom, that I'm very, always very conscious of in yeah. in our position in the global movement because it's great for us. It's great that that, that we connect and we feel such energy, um, but that's that's not reflected in the changes yet that that disabled people around the world are seeing on on a day to day basis in their in their majority. There's a long way to go. Yeah, no, I I I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, which brings me really kind of. The, the, all, all these points flow one f um, one to the other, or I hope they do. I think they do, um, which is we've seen and we and are still experiencing really major sea changes, not least following the um, pandemic, but also some 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 major changes in society, not least the I hope anyway a handover to uh, your generation because I consider myself an oldie. So from the, kind of the older generation to the younger generation. So that, that brings up a kind of um, really quite a kind of logical question, Peter, which you can answer because you are of that generation, which is how do we, but really more to the point, how do you build on what you have and we have to go forward? Well, I think it's I think it's together, isn't it? Isn't oh yeah, it, I'm, I, don't, I don't. I can help I a think, little bit. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, I, I I think you, you're right. The, the generational uh, gaps are having such sort of profound differences, um, aren't they? But I, yeah. I sort of also also feel that as um, in in my thirties, the sort of stuff that people younger than me is doing is 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 so so impressive um yeah. but i want to sort of touch on a few um challenges for us, us as a movement and i will like i mean i'll take us in challenges i'll end on a positive note but oh, let's please, please 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 <laughs> let's, let's let's go through the challenges first uh, absolutely um, because that's what we've got to deal with yeah i think that um it was it was it was sort of it's interesting like last last week i think it was the global disability summit was really focusing on the the equitable participation of persons with disabilities right yeah and i think that's something that we we want to um bring attention to as a movement and so that i do want to touch on something and and tom we were in a sort of discussing this um before over yeah. email and yeah, whatnot yeah absolutely um I feel that sort of there could be, and there should be, more speakers from the global south. That's such a big, a big important yeah. event in the in the disability calendar calendar like yeah. that. I think there should be um, fewer fewer people like me. I think we had a bit of a sort of um, exchange exchange about it. It's 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 a real honour to be here. Yeah. But that's also precisely um, why it shouldn't shouldn't necessarily. Uh, be me as there are so many people in the global south and I know the the zero project is a global network and in touch with them mm -hmm. um, obviously these these big conferences are just sort of maybe um, it's just sort of uh, come about as the the, the product of, of broader things where they're, they're yeah. in a whole range of dimensions there isn't enough sort of uh, shifting shifting of the power yet yeah. Um and sort of one 
to, to kind of explore those challenges a bit more deeply, um, sort of want to touch on a few structural challenges to the Peter, can I, movement. Can I just give you a warning? We've got about three more minutes. Okay, all so right, okay, sweet. So I, I mean, I'd, love, I'd love challenges. to explore it in depth. Um, can you... Do you like, I'll, I'll, I'll highlight two. Um, Great, that would be really about good. About 15% of the world's uh, population being people with disabilities. Yeah. But most of those people don't identify as such, and they don't know we're speaking on their behalf. Right, that's absolutely right? true. So we've got a real challenge to widen the movement. Yeah. I think we've also got, when you look at the changes in the world... Um, whether it's, whether it's climate change, whether it's all these different sort of uh, groupings that are forming, whether it's this sort of real uh, unfortunate um, re-emergence of, of, of war onto yeah. the uh, European, European frontiers and major yeah. power expansion. Um, I think we really need to be like trying and uh, as we are and more and more to be part of uh, wider movements for a better world to kind of really link more with, say, especially um, movements around aging and look at the commonalities. And um, we're still sort of, even though we're getting into so many places, I think disability yeah. is still too often... Um, seen as separate. But Tom, I promised that end on a positive note. Oh, yes, right? please, um, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we have, a, like, there are some problems. It's good to have this problem, right? And the, the I think the Zero Project sort of really poses us a good problem, which is we've got a lot of stuff going on, right? We've yeah. got a lot. We've got a lot of innovations. We've got a lot of creativity. We've got a lot of new solutions, and we've got a lot of drive. How how do we how do we leverage that? Right? We've got yeah. a, we've got a, a lot we can work with, and it's this matter of how do we how do we scale that? How do we make that these innovations that that are often working um, in certain places or for small numbers of people? How do they how do they get to more people? And so that, that's I get that's why we've. Um, that's why we've come together, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's and yeah. yeah, that's absolutely right. No, I'm terribly sorry. I've just got a thing saying zero minutes, but it's not zero minutes, um, which will prevent me from thanking you very much indeed for joining us, Peter. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope that um, we'll see you next year and we can get to know each other. And I think our viewers will really have enjoyed this session. So the best of luck, best for the rest of the year, and thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Tom, and all the best to everyone there. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.